it's Visual Moss here and today I'm going to be talking about service dogs. So I get many 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 questions throughout my day and throughout my videos about service dogs and I'm just going to pretty much clarify all of them here in one video for you. So to start off, uh, what is a service dog? A service dog, according to the ADA law, which is Americans with Disabilities Act, uh, which is the law that covers service animals, under the ADA, a service animal is defined as a dog that has been individually trained to do work or perform tasks for an individual with a disability. The task performed by the dog must be directly related to the disability. By what that means is a dog that is specifically tasked for somebody's disability and those tasks have to perform for the disability. So you can't have like diabetes and have a dog to alert you to seizures if you don't have seizures because there's that's not the that's not the whole point of a service dog. The whole point of a service dog is to help you with your or disabilities. A dog that is specifically trained for you. Pretty much what does perform tasks mean? Uh, the dog must be trained to take a specific action when needed to assist a person with a disability. So also what by that means, if you have diabetes, you would have a dog to alert you if your blood sugar is low or if your blood sugar is high. If you have psychiatric issues like myself, you would have a dog to alert you when a panic attack is coming along or if you're having an episode or really just anything. Sometimes I, pe I see people who have dogs who will alert them when it's time to take their medicine or I see dogs to uh, retrieve medicine for them. And also another thing a service dog can do is can help with mobility things, but you have to make sure that the dog is cleared by a vet and has to be a certain amount of weight compared to your weight. So there's a lot of medical things that go on along with that, but dogs can help with mobility. Another thing, uh, this is a really, really wide question that I get a lot. So a lot of people think that I have an emotional support animal because Cloud is for psychiatric reasons. And no, that is not the case. An emotional support animal is not the same as a service animal. So the reason a emotional support animal isn't the same as a service animal by law is no, these terms are used to describe animals that provide comfort just by being with a person because they have not been trained to perform a specific job or task. They do not qualify as service animals under the ADA. However, some state or local governments have laws that allow people with, to take emotional support animals into public places. You may check with your state and local government. So what that says is that emotional support animals Animals just provide comfort so they're not trained for anything they just help by being there and those do not have public access rights emotional support animals are not allowed in public only service animals are because service animals are trained and service animals are specifically trained for public areas as well so like any situation you can think of that would happen in the public, the service animals are supposed to be trained or desensitized to that situation so they can act appropriately. Emotional support animals don't have any training, they're not used to being in public, so therefore they're not allowed in public because they're not there for you medically. I mean, they can be there for you medically, but they're not specifically trained, if that makes any sense. So there, there's a difference. So they don't have public access rights. Don't take your emotional support animal into Walmart because that's against the law. A lot of people ask about therapy animals and now therapy animals are different as well. Therapy dogs are trained but not for one person. Therapy dogs are actually for more than one person because they go to hospitals and they help people there. They do also kind of provide comfort in a way but they are mostly trained to act appropriate in a hospital. But they're for more than one person so therefore they do not have public access rights besides a hospital as well. You cannot take your therapy animal to like Walmart and be like oh this is my therapy animal. You can't because it's against the law. They have to be for a hospital or for a public event that helps with many people and not just one. You're also probably thinking then, why is a psychiatric service dog and emotional support animal not the same thing? So the difference between a psychiatric service dog, which is a service dog for mental disabilities, and emotional support animal is also for mental disabilities, but they're still different because a psychiatric service dog is trained for the person with their disabilities. Now you can have a diagnosed disability and have an emotional support animal, but that doesn't make them a service dog. You have to have them specifically trained for your disability. Now if they're not trained, you don't have public access. Another thing I will say is that you cannot just have a disability and have a dog and that dog make it an automatically service dog. You have to have a diagnosed disability and you have to have a trained service animal for yourself. You cannot just have a pet that doesn't make them automatically a service animal. Now, another thing is you can't just have a service animal or a trained dog and not have a diagnosed disability that doesn't make them a service animal. So to make an animal a service animal, you have to have a diagnosed disability and a trained animal. You can't have a trained animal and no diagnosed disability or you can't have a diagnosed disability and no trained animal it just doesn't work you have to have both 
and that's just how it is by law. Now, another question I get a lot is, do service animals have to be professionally trained or do you have to get them from the program? No, people with disabilities have the right to train this, the dog themselves and are not required to use a professional service dog training program. I personally train Cloud myself. Um, I have this whole year, I've never gotten evaluated by somebody professionally, never. I've got all my advice from other service dog handlers and all like my training skills from like YouTube, just watching YouTube videos and all that. And I have the right to do that by law. I am allowed to owner train them. And if you wanna owner train your dog, it's perfectly fine, you're allowed to. There is a lot of backlash that gets from owner training though because you're not being evaluated by a fresh professional and you yourself are not a professional. So exactly, you don't completely know what you're doing. So a lot of owner trained service dogs do end up getting washed or retired out, but it could go either way. I mean, owner training is pretty much the cheaper version of getting a service dog because a lot of people can't pay for programs or can't pay for professional trainers such as myself. It goes both ways. It still can work out and you're still allowed to by law. Another big thing about service animals are there's obviously the title called service animals in training or service dogs in training. Now what that means is that the dog is still in training. Generally do not have public access rights. Um, it says no under the ADA the dog must already be trained before it can be taken into public places. But however some state or local laws cover animals that are still in training. So generally any state uh, is a allowed to deny a service animal in training but if you check your state laws because those can always be different from American laws if you check your state laws some of them do allow service animals in training into public places my state West Virginia allows service animals in training and I still do consider cloud in training she has her task down and she has her general public behavior down but there are still some things that she can mess up so for now I like to still uh, label her as in training I checked some state law and they do allow uh, and training animals, so uh, she's allowed in public. When can an establishment pretty much deny a service dog or service animal? So in situations where it is not obvious that the dog is a service animal, staff may only ask two questions. One, is the dog a service animal required because of a disability? And two, what work or task does the dog been trained to perform. Staff are not allowed to request any documentation for the dog required that the dog demonstrate its task or inquire about the nature of the person's disability. So what this means is that the only questions that the establishment can ask is one, is the dog a service dog and, and what task does it perform? They are not allowed to ask for any ID, any documentation, any doctor's note, nothing like that. They are not allowed to ask. That is actually illegal and you can sue them for that. Automatically, if you answer those two questions, they have to let you inside the building. You're also probably thinking, when can an establish actually deny a service dog in case it's a fake? A particular service animal behaves in a way that possesses a direct threat to the, the health or safety of others, has a history or such behavior, or it is not under control of the handler, that animal may be excluded. So pretty much what that means is that if a dog walks into establishment and is not behaving, it's barking, lunging, it's uh, being aggressive, anything in that behavior, they are not allowed in the store, so the store can actually kick them out. And that is the only way, the only way a person or establishment can kick them out. Other than that, an establishment cannot kick you out for having a certain dog breed or for having the dog in general. The only way they can kick you out is if the dog's acting aggressively, just out of behavior and the handler is not taking control of it. Ooh, this is a big one. So another question I get is, do service animals have to wear a vest? And this is a big one because many, many people believe that a service animal has to have a vest. And no, the ADA does not require service animals to wear a vest, ID tag, or a specific harness. You can literally just walk into the store with your trained service animal, not just your pet, your trained service animal you can walk in there without a vest just a collar and leash on you're still following the law a lot of other businesses believe that you have to have a vest on as well and that's that's a no-no if a business is sitting there telling you that you have to have a vest on you can tell them that's illegal and that no you don't have to have a vest on majority of the teams you usually don't really see service dog teams that don't have a vest because a lot of us like to label our dogs as service animals because many people don't get the idea like oh I see an animal in a store it could just be a pet they don't automatically think that it's a service animal. So a lot of us like to label our dogs as service animals so the general public understands and knows. Can a service animal go in a food line with somebody? Because like it's food and you know you usually don't want a dog around your um, A service animal must be allowed to accompany their handlers and throughout self-service food lines. 
Um, so pretty much this states that a service animal can be anywhere that their handler's at. It doesn't matter where they are. If they're around food, then the service animal is allowed around that food. However, the dog must behave. The dog can't be eating the food. It can't be um, jumping up on the table. And if you're in a restaurant, the dog should not be sitting at the booth. It should be on the floor underneath the table, leaving everyone alone and being away from the food. But the dog is allowed there. Another thing is like uh, hotels, non-pet friendly hotels, they do have to allow your service animal um, by law. If they do deny, you can sue, um, but can they charge more for your animal? And that is a no. Hotels are not permitted to charge guests for cleaning the hair or dander sh uh, shed by a service animal. However, if a guest service animal causes damage to a guest room, a hotel is permitted to charge the same fee and damages as charged to other guests. So therefore, they cannot charge you for just having the dog, they cannot charge you for dog hair, but if your dog causes damage, such as chewing on a chair, chewing on a table, breaks a table, anything like that, they can charge you the same amount as they did for other guests if they broke stuff. Can people bring more than one service animal to an establishment? Generally, yes. Some people with disabilities may use more than one service animal to perform different tasks. For instance, if uh, you can have one dog to alert you to your diabetes and you can have another dog to alert you to seizures, um, it kind of all just depends. You can have one uh, dog specifically for mental disabilities and you can have one dog specifically for physical disabilities. You can have two dogs and this team is generally uh, called a tandem team. That's kind of like the name that uh, the community has kind of named them. Um, if you have more than one service animal, you're called a tandem team. So those are allowed into public and those are allowed by law, so. Another thing is, does a hospital have to allow your service animal while you're being an inpatient? And generally, yes, service animals must be allowed in inpatient rooms and anywhere else in the hospital and public patients are allowed to go. They cannot be excluded on the grounds that staff can provide the same services. So your service animal is allowed anywhere you are um, in a hotel pretty much, um, in a hospital pretty much. That's what I meant to say, not a hotel. So service animal is generally allowed anywhere that you are allowed um, in a hospital. So if you're being an inpatient, your service animal is allowed to be there with you. Okay, so what happens if you're an inpatient and you have a service animal, um, but you cannot take care of your service animal while you are an inpatient? If the inpatient is not able to take care of the service animal, the patient can make arrangements for a family member or a friend to come to the hospital to provide these services. And if you cannot do that as well, you shouldn't have your service animal there because the poor dog or horse, miniature horse, because those are allowed, you know, cannot, shouldn't be there if they're not going to be taken care of. Uh, must a service animal be allowed to ride an ambulance? Yes, they are allowed to ride an ambulance, but if the space of the ambulance is crowded and the dog's presence would interfere with the emergency medical staff's ability to treat the patient, staff should make other arrangements to get the dog to the hospital. They are generally allowed in, in the ambulance, but if uh, the ambulance is pretty crowded and the dog's there and just getting in the way of getting you help, then you would have to find other transportation for the dog to get to the hospital. All right, now we're moving to the big, big question is, does a service animal need certification, an ID, or registration of any sort? No. Covered entities may not require documentation such as proof that the animal has been certified, trained, or licensed as a service animal. A business cannot ask for registration, certification, or ID. Uh, the, the law does not require it. You do not need a paper stating that your dog is a service dog. Um, however, there are websites out there that do are like, oh, service dog registration, just pay a fee and we'll give you a service dog registration, all this stuff. Those are scams. Those are just wanting to get your money and honestly, they'll send you a piece of paper you don't even need because if you go into a business and they ask you for registration, you can sue them for that. You don't need registration or anything like that of that sort. Um, the law does not require it. Now, however, um, if your city or your state requires your dogs to be licensed as a dog, not a service animal, which is as a dog, then you still have to follow those rules. Um, if your dog has to be vaccinated um, just because it's a dog, um, yes, individuals uh, who have service animals are not exempt from local animal control or public health. 
requirements. Your dog still has to be licensed as a dog. It doesn't have to be licensed. It can be licensed as a service animal, but it has to be licensed as a dog if your state requires it. Can any dog be a service animal? And yes, the ADA does not restrict the type of dog breeds that can be a service animal. So I get a lot of uh, questions asking, can any dog be a service animal? Uh, yes, they can. There's a lot of backlash with pit bulls and etc. but they can be service animals and not all pit bulls are horrible. Just putting that out there. So you know, obviously you guys know that my service animal is a husky. I don't recommend a husky for a service animal, but that's what I got, so. Okay, so what happens if the person with a disability thinks that they're, they are being discriminated, which is they're being denied their service animal when their, their animal is legit and not fake? Individuals who believe that they are being illegally denied access or service because of the service animals may file a complaint with the U.S. Department of Justice. Individuals also have the right to file a private lawsuit in federal court charging the entity with discrimination under the ADA. So, like I said, you can sue. Another thing that we see a lot in the service dog community, we see a lot of pictures of people of their dogs in a shopping cart. And the big question is, is service animals allowed in shopping carts? Generally, the dog must stay on the floor or the person must carry the dog. For example, the person with disabilities has a glucose alert dog. He may carry the dog in the chest pack. It can be close to his face and able to smell his breath to alert. So that means that service animals, um, they're not supposed to be in the cart. And also, uh, businesses should be stopping this also because if they have food, it's kind of a health code violation as well because um, even if the dog is clean, it's a service animal, whatever, it's not supposed to be in the cart. The dog can be a service animal, but you're not supposed to have it in the cart. So generally, most people who have legitimate service dogs know this rule. So if you see an animal in a cart, we automatically just think that it's a fake because majority of people who have real service dogs know the ADA law and they know that their dog isn't supposed to be in the cart. But the business still has to follow their laws as well. And also, if you have a service animal, just try to be considerate and think of other people. Um, there's many, many people out there who have uh, allergies to dogs. So try to be considerate and try to keep your dog out of the way. So another question is, what about housing that doesn't allow pets? Uh, the ADA applies to housing programs administrations by state and local governments, such as public housing authorities and by blah blah blah. Service animals are automatically allowed in places that have no pets policy or anything like that. Like let's say you live in a college dorm. They obviously don't allow pets and your service animal is allowed to live there with you by law. Another thing is emotional support animals. They are allowed in not public places but places who do not allow pets. So uh, housing, housing. Not like stores or anything like that but if you live in a house that the landlord says states that you're not allowed to have that animal there. Um, you have to get a doctor's note for your emotional support animal and they are allowed there by law. Another thing that emotional support animals have is they are allowed in airplanes. If you have a doctor's note, you have to get a doctor's note. Um, they're allowed on airplanes as well with you. So that's the only rights that emotional support animals have is housing, no pet housing, and airplanes, airlines. So that's the only rights that they have. Otherwise, a service animal is allowed anywhere, any store. Um, they're allowed in no pet housing and they're allowed in airplanes as well on top of stores and really anywhere else the general public is allowed to go. So anyway guys, I hope this video was very helpful for you and I answered a lot of your questions. If you have any more, you can always comment them down below and I will answer them for you. Another question I will get, what is the hardest thing about having a service animal? One, I wanna say having a disability because you need to have a disability to have a service animal. Having a disability is pretty difficult. I will say that the dog, training the dog is also very difficult, but the most difficult thing ever is to dealing with the general public. Um, a lot of people will come up to you and talk to you, so I do not recommend a service animal if you have social anxiety. If you have a dog or a miniature horse, more people are prone to talk to you. A lot of people who are um, who don't even know you will just come up to you and start asking you questions and just talk to you or tell you your dog's beautiful or tell you your horse is really cool looking or anything like that. Um, I, I get a lot of people who come up to me and tell me, ask me for my dog's name. So generally the general public is a big problem about having a service animal on top of making sure that the dog behaves and training the dog. They help. They really do help. I am blessed to have my service animal and I'm sure anyone else who has one can tell you that they're blessed to have one as well. If you think a service animal will help you 
consult your doctor. Don't ask just anybody on, on Instagram, consult your doctor, somebody who has your medical records and has seen you before. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Later. Oh, 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 oh,